you know, I see people walking around these streets, and man, they're 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 walking around and they're. And, 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 and there's nobody within a hundred feet of them. And you're just like, what is going on? You know, and they, they're just completely, they're just a full-grown devil. That's just what it, what it is. And the fact is, I mean, Jesus died for that person. But they didn't want nothing to do with it. And But that there's a lesson, young people. You don't want to listen to your parents. You don't want to listen to your teachers. You don't want to listen to, I mean... You, you will pay the price. It's not going to be your parents. It's not going to be your bosses. It's not going to be uh, the sheriff that puts you away. It's going to be you. And uh, like Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you better start sowing some seeds of righteousness today. So, But by studying God's dealings with sin, we know He's holy because there are moral absolutes and they are apparent and absolutes are clear if you choose Jesus Christ you will live a better life I'm not saying you'll be rich healthy wealthy and wise you will live a better life you know you'll have your brain you know when, when you have good times with friends and family you'll be able to remember it the next day you know, is, does that matter I mean uh, I, when, when I was off the deep end you know, I had a young friend that passed away, and I spent like every waking moment with this guy. And uh, I could barely remember the times we hung out together. And I'm just like, I wish I had those memories. He's gone. You know, and but the devil robbed me. You going to let him rob you? You know, don't you want to remember being around your parents? Don't you want to remember coming to church? Don't you want to remember your friends? I mean, don't you want to remember the good times? Remember what God's done for you? Be sober-minded, amen? Be vigilant. Because the devil is seeking whom he can devour. He wants to devour your life, your mind, your, your testimony. So what else about God? Uh, we'll just do one more. I thought I was going to hit four things today. I'm way too long-winded. Okay. I know, I know. Okay, it's beeping at me. So God is holy. We understand that. God is holy. But God is also righteous. Now, what's righteous mean? It's almost the equivalent of holiness. But it includes all we call justice, honesty, and virtue uh, with holy affections. Um, righteousness is the theme of the book of Romans. Further, the book of Job and its theme is why the righteous suffer. Why the righteous suffer? You want to know about a little something about why do the righteous suffer? Why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Spend some time looking at the book of Job. You're going to get some answers. But because God is righteous, that's a condemning fact. That's a condemning fact. God is righteous. So you know what? My, my piddly excuses aren't going to cut it. God is righteous. You know, oh, well, you know, I just... I couldn't make it that day because, you know, and, uh, well, I kind of felt like this was a little more important. You know, God, he's just up there with that gavel, and he's ready to drop that gavel, and he's, I am righteous. I don't care about your excuses. You know, it is, it is either black or white. It is either true or false. I am righteous. That's God. He's righteous. And uh, it's a condemning fact. So, uh, look at Isaiah 64, 6. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Go to, if you go to the middle, the Bible, you'll be in Psalms. Hang a right, you'll go to Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 6. Isaiah 64, 6. Amen. And it reads like this. But we are all... See, we like that all, don't we? You know, but when it comes to verses like this, we're like, all? Yeah, all. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we do all... I'm sorry, we all do fade as a leaf, 
and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. See, God is righteous. This is a condemning fact to a Jehovah Witness trust in their works to save them. God is righteous. Uh, it's a condemning fact to a Catholic trust in their works to save them. God is righteous. Uh, it's a uh, condemning fact to a Pentecostal trust in works to save them. God is righteous. Uh, these all forget that God's not impressed with performance. You can't forget, God will never be impressed with your performance. I mean, the, the least you could do is just what you're supposed to do. God will not be impressed and be like, wow! You know, I mean, because remember, you have nothing good about you other than what you borrowed from God Himself. Amen? You had to borrow what's good about you. And, uh, well, praise the Lord, He'll give it free. But... These people, they forget God's not impressed with performance. Why? Because look at uh, Romans 10.3. Romans 10.3. Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. This is a condemning fact right here. Amen. Amen. Romans 10 verse 3. And it says this in Romans 10.3, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. You see that? They don't care about God's righteousness. They're going to make their own. It says this, Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So what does that tell you? If you think that on Monday you'll trust in salvation by grace through faith, and Tuesday it'll be your works. And Monday it'll be grace through faith. And Tuesday it'll be your works. You know what the Bible says about you? You've never trusted by grace through faith. You've never trusted. Because you're still, you're obviously still trusting your works. That's why you keep diverting back to your performance. You need to let go and let God. You need to put your whole trust like that man looking at the gallows. Put everything you have on the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's it. And once you do that, I'm telling you, it will be scary. Because you're like, but what if, and what if, and uh, uh. Once you do that, it will take faith. Because it's like, okay, God, like, I understand, you know, I'm just going to put all my faith on the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? And I'm just going to trust that to save me. And then you're going to walk back, and it will be quiet. And you're like, Ugh. And Then all of a sudden you're going to say, I'm alive. I'm okay. I'm, wow, I'm, I'm understanding what the Bible's saying when I'm reading it. Wow, when I pray, like, I'm getting answered prayers. Wow, like, I have a relationship with God. I'm happy. Wow, I'm not all under condemnation all the time. Wow, you know, I can live a Christian life. I can hand out tracts and my goodness, you know, and now I just serve God because I love Him, you know, and uh, amen? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. There's a few people I nearly know, because that, that's the deal. you got to put it all on the death, burial, and the resurrection and just walk back let him have it. You couldn't do it right anyway, even if you tried. So he did it right the first time. You just give it to him. Amen? And then, you know, because he's righteous. He's holy. He's not an Indian giver. That's what I like. Um, but because he's righteous, it's a condemning fact. It's a condemning faith. Ezra 9.15 says, O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped as it is the day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses. God knows every one of them. For we cannot stand before thee because of this. There's not one sin that you have that God's not 110% aware of. He knows them all. Where are you going to run? Where are you going to hide? You can't hide. You couldn't dig a hole deep enough. You couldn't go out to space far enough. I mean, there's nowhere you can run. You can't dive in the water. Oh, he, he'll be down there. You, 
You go to Mars, he'll meet you over there too. Uh, you, you, you dig a hole. I mean, even in uh, Psalms it says, you know, well, if I made my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. You couldn't, God will see you down there too. But the fact is this, it's a condemning faith. God is righteous. But what else do we learn because God is righteous? That God is a commending Father. Now you guys are kind of understanding a little bit more about, I believe, about God. Psalm 116 verse 5 says, Gracious is the, is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. He's merciful. You know, and that's because He's righteous. You know, He's going to give you more than you need. Very often. Uh, amen? Can anybody testify to that? I know I have more than I need. I know I don't deserve half of what I have. I mean, 90% uh, of it's sitting right there. I don't deserve that. But God gave it to me for some reason. You know, but He's a commending Father. You don't want an unrighteous Father. You want a righteous Father. You know, and the Bible says if you haven't submitted unto the righteousness of God in Ephesians 2, then your Father is the devil. And He's an unrighteous Father. He's like a pimp. You don't want a Father like that. No, I mean, we, we, me and my dad, we drive all around this town. We see these hookers and pimps on Sierra Highway. And what kind of life is that? Who would want to be associated with somebody like that, with a pimp? But that's all the devil is. Use you, abuse you, and throw you out on the streets. And if, if you've lived without the Lord Jesus Christ in your life for five years, at least... You probably know what I'm talking about. But when you get under that commending Father, Jesus Christ, who is righteous, then you, you know what a good daddy is. And he's always going to give you more than you need. You know, and he doesn't always give you your, your wanters, but he gives you your needers. And that's that's what Maze Jackson used to say. But, but you know, I believe just as, as we're going through these attributes of God, I just really believe that you're going to get more acquainted with who your Lord is. You can trust Him. Amen? He's long-suffering. Um, you can trust Him. He's merciful. He's holy. Amen? But because all these things are so, you can trust Him. You can love Him. You can give Him all your hopes and dreams. All of them. You can He's righteous. I mean, it's like if, if I had a gold pocket watch... I wouldn't just walk up to anybody and say, hey man, can you hold on to that for me? You know, I would be really careful on who I did that with. What about if it was your eternity? Yeah. You walk up to Jesus Christ, hey, can you hold on to this for me, my eternity? You can trust Him. He's righteous. He's holy. You can trust Him with your hopes, your dreams. He will multiply your life in aspects you've never imagined. You're going to be doing something for God once you submit to the righteousness of God. Once you let, once you trust in His righteousness. Uh, God is real. Amen? He's real. This is not a joke. It's not a game. It's all real life. And uh, we, we understand that. God is big. And I hope you realize that. God is strong. And these attributes of God, they should strengthen your faith. They should strengthen your faith. And that's why I feel like the Lord had me to go over these things. So hopefully that was a blessing to you. And uh, we'll just pick up where we left off next week. Um, we'll go ahead and go into prayer. Amen. God, we thank you for your mercy and grace. And we just ask, God, that you would just uh, now just move in our congregation. God, if there is anybody here that has not submitted to the righteousness of God, that today would be the day. And, but Lord, help us to understand more clearly that once we put all of our faith in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can just serve you because we love you and because you first loved us. And uh, I, I just want to pray for each one individually in here, God, that you would just meet them where they are and that, that you would just show them by, by your holy word you know, what it is that you would have them to do with their lives with their families, with their jobs, 
us with every aspect. Guide them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Goes straight for the guitar, doesn't he? (laughs) (laughs) I don't blame him. You mind if I play it a little bit? You want to play a song, buddy? (laughs) 